Greetings YouTube. I'm back again. I have a day off today so I decided I would film another video for you. Uh, today is going to cover some of the more general weapons I have, not just knives. So we're going to start over here. Now this right here, give you a scale compared to my hand, is a battle axe which has a, about a four foot shaft on it. The original shaft was very poor quality. I replaced it. It's a pretty decent axe. Not tremendous. Uh, classic wooden boken, nothing all that exciting. Improvised impact weapon, one hockey, field hockey stick, still useful, I happen to like the shape. Here is the two-handed machete, which was very popular when I talked about it in my knife video, and I can see why it's really quite useful. And my one of my cats is back again because she, she seems to love the spotlight. Here we have a throwing spear, which has a cork on its tip to keep it from uh, being dangerous. Um, really too light to be used for much of throwing. It's designed specific. I mean, for thrusting, it's really designed for throwing. It's got about a six foot height on that one. Standard fiberglass um, bow. Here we have a bow. This is an actual Asian bow staff. My wife keeps that on her side of the bed. Um, we have a Bushman from Cold Steel, which I have mounted onto a tool handle. And it makes a very strong spear. Uh, very rigid, um, quite durable. Okay, now we come over here. Uh, another standard Boken, Wakazashi size. Here we have a Tomahawk throwing the head. This is the kind of that just slips on and off the shaft. So if you, you know the shaft gets damaged, just slip it onto a new one. This is a pick. It has a four prong tip on one side, which is designed so it won't slip off of uh, hitting armor. And then the other side is a four sided all point no edge. Now the shaft looks like it's bamboo and it is in fact made out of bamboo, but running down the center is a steel shaft, so it is actually very rigid. Um, we have an aluminum baseball bat, improvised impact weapon. We have a bone, which I got originally as an idea, maybe using for a handle of some variety. Um, uh, one pair of nunchucks, uh, high quality, full swivels, hardwood, very nice. This right here, get the tip in there, is a saber that a friend made for me many years ago. It's designed to have the right bl length blade for my um, arm draw. You'll excuse me for a moment. Moving a cap. Next we have a walking stick that I've made. Now the tip on this, the handle, is a solid brass knob from a horse harness. It's uh, this is all that that's solid in there. It's very rigid, and I put it onto a uh, just a stick that I happen to like the shape of. It took me about two hours to knock that out. Um, probably a total of five or ten dollars worth of materials in there. Uh, two bubba sticks, uh, rather th tire thumpers. That's called a bubba stick, by the way. I don't know why, but it is. Um, two tire thumpers designed for smacking tires. They have weights in the ends so that they uh, have a higher level of impact. Never intended, of course, for actually harming people. Now this right here is a walking stick, my preferred walking stick. That right there is corundum, uh, a precious, semi-precious stone. The tip up here is, the handle, is actually a whale's tooth. And again, uh, 19th century, so no people get upset at me and I'm not killing whales. And again, looks like bamboo, and it is, but there's a solid steel shaft. So this would not actually be used as an impact weapon, but as a thrusting device. Very useful. Um, people don't expect that. We have a very low quality kukri. This is a gift. I did not buy this. It's not very good. I freely admit it. It's just kind of a thing to have around the house. This right here is a yari, a Japanese spearhead. All right, it's three sides designed for thrusting. Um, I've never mounted it, which is why it's in my hand and not um, on a shaft. This is a bush hook, or a brush hook. 
and I own it because it's cool, but also because this is the predecessor of a number of uh, European pole arms. This is what they grew out of, and I find that historically interesting. Now, this is a hammer designed for smithing. However, it is the size and shape that you would actually find in a real world Warhammer. So when you see Warhammers in fantasy games with heads the size of loaves of bread, those are not what Warhammers look like, folks. This is about the size a real Warhammer would be, which is why I have it. Um, this is a Mark I uh, U.S. Navy bayonet. Why the Navy has bayonets, I'm not really sure, but it holds a really nice edge, and I've used it on more than one occasion in the field. It is uh, very effective. Um, I really like this particular blade. Now this is a fantasy warhammer. Give me a full 360 on that one. This is made out of cast aluminum. It is nothing but a wall hanger. This is vaguely based on a German design, I believe. Someone gave that to me. This, again, improvised impact weapon. A solid. Uh, it's a steel uh, pipe. Very useful. I got it originally as possibly an idea again for a handle. This is designed as a fireman, firefighting axe for fighting forest fires. Uh, designed for uh, cutting brush out of the way as well as cutting through heavier objects. And again, the kind of thing that was used in Europe to help evolve weapons that became common pole arms. We have a couple of scythe, because everyone you know, needs a pair of steel scythe around the house. They're so handy. Another wall hanger, designed, again, just for show, cast aluminum, vaguely based on a real-world um, design. But you just the kind of thing you hang up to look nice. Here's another wall hanger. I'll get you to set. There's, there's absolutely no edge on this. The fact the edge is like an eighth inch flat. It's designed just to look at. Um, it, it was a wedding gift, and it was used ceremonially during my first wedding ceremony. And then we have the last weapon I'm going to be showing you today, and this is a short thrusting spear. All could be used as a throwing spear. This spear is solid steel and about three quarters of an inch thick. And the tip is very, very sharp. I know, I'm the person that sharpened this. Um, it's got a socket here. Now you could easily remove this if you wanted to and uh, put it onto a larger shaft if you wanted it. This was just, this is how my buddy put it together, mostly as a means of displaying it, and I just never took it off. Um, he actually put a little ferrule on the end to keep the wood from splitting at a later date. Um, so this is another selection of my, uh, pardon me, trucks leaving. Those would be the fire trucks that are right across the street from my apartment. This is another selection of my weapon collection. And no, this is not all of the weapon collection. Uh, I actually have more of them, which are currently in a box buried under a toolbox, which is actually not all that accessible because the room is really, really warm. When the weather gets a little cooler, I'll go in there and dig them out. And, uh, and over here, you notice, the thing right here is a flashlight right there. This is a standard maglite flashlight, which is also very useful as an improvised impact weapon. And I have these in 2D cell, 3D cell, and 6D cell models in my house. And the 6D cells is obnoxiously large, but it is uh, quite useful if you need to have an improvised impact weapon. So, these are more things in my house. And um, I still think this is one of the most interesting ones I've got. It's just, you just don't see it very often, you know what I mean? It's very uncommon. Most people don't, don't carry picks around. But uh, this is more of my stuff. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll give you one more look of my battle axe. Hey, there's my cat, Spam. Say hi, Spam. And there's my battle axe, which I've always really loved.